the quran kareem states that when they wake up on the day of judgment kanhum yawma yarawnaha when they see judgment day lam yalbathu illa ashiyatan aw duhaha that they didn't remain in this world but for a morning or an evening so this world is counted breaths it's a short span of time we have to make it count allah says in the quran kareem inna nahnu nuhyi al mauta verily we give life to the dead wa naktubu ma qaddamu wa atharuhum and we write meaning allah instructs the angels to write down ma qaddamu what they invested for the hereafter wa atharuhum and their footsteps also are written down this verse as explained by our ulama and the mufassirin ma qaddamu means what is invested for the hereafter to send forth qaddama yuqaddimu pesh karna another meaning of qaddama is also to prioritize so sometimes a person lives for dunya and he just gets deen done and the other is one who prioritizes deen and he treats his dunya as his secondary mission so allah taala even sees this both are getting an aspect of deen fulfilled the task of deen fulfilled but even he who prioritizes allah's deen this is something really beloved to allah subhanahu wa taala and that is also written down and this is a lesson of life this will come with us what we invest for the hereafter and when we prioritize the deen of allah subhanahu wa taala so we should not make the pleasures of this world our goal and purpose we're going to leave it all Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah 39 Zumar verses 8 wa ina massal insana dhurrun da'a rabbah da'a rabbahu muniban ilayhi thumma idha khawwalahu ni'matan minhu nasiya ma kana yad'u ilayhi nasiya ma kana yad'u ilayhi min qablu wa ja'ala lillahi andadan liyudilla an sabili qul tamatta' bi kufrika qalila innaka min ashabin nar when difficulty afflicts insan then he turns to allah repenting to him then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala assists him and blesses him with bounties khawwalahu Khawala means Allah gives a person great bounties and he's folded with different different pleasures. We learn from here that when Allah gives different bounties in different different forms, different pleasures and comforts in this world, these have to be attributed to Allah. We have to understand that all of this comes from Allah. Even if the bounties of Allah are wrapped around us, the pleasures of this world is always tainted. we have to keep this in mind the pleasures of this world and the luxuries of this world always has its heartache it is never complete this world's difficulties are mixed with ease and this world's ease and comforts are always mixed with challenges and difficulties this is not the ultimate we should never make this the goal and the purpose and the objective of our life and whatever difficulty afflicts us turn to allah and we should realize and analyze that this is best for us and whatever goodness comes to us turn to allah and make shukr to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala interestingly khawwalahu that bounties are laid around the person and folded in folds around him in abundance but still all of that can never stop death when his time comes every one of us have to go and the time is written already interestingly in the quran kareem in chapter 63 verses 9 onwards allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ya ayyuhal ladina amanu la tunhikum amwalukum wa la auladukum an dhikrillah o people of iman let your wealth nor your children make you oblivious of allah's dhikr of allah's remembrance of allah's deen if this is your condition wa man yaf'al dhalika fa ulaika humul khasirun those are the losers you have lost your deal the best investment is the investment of akhirah and we acquired everything of this world but we didn't invest in this permanent investment this definite investment this investment whose feedbacks are guaranteed allah says in hadith qudsi oh my banda ufrugh min kanzika indi 
Invest what you have by me. Leave it by me. By me, la gharqa wa la harqa wa la sarq. It can never be destroyed, drowned, burnt, stolen. I will give it to you. I will return it to you when you need it most. This is what the Sahaba Kiram radiallahu anhum understood. A man visited Hazrat Abu Darda radiallahu anhu in his home and he found him to live in great simplicity. And he said, Hazrat, is this the condition? Is this the condition you live in? And yes, he took care of his guest. But he asked him, where's your furniture? Where's your comforts? So he said, oh respected guest, you know, we have a house there. Lana darun hunalik. We have a house there. Everything valuable, everything we love, we send it there. Because we are all going to go there. We're not gonna, we're not gonna stay here. And what is here is not going to last. Subhanallah. Then he says to his guest, have you understood? He says, yes. I said, I have understood. In this verse, Allah says, وَأَنْفِقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقْنَاكُمْ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَ أَحَدَكُمُ الْمَوْتِ And spend of what we have provided for you. So this means wealth. And it can also mean from, from your time, from your position, from your status, from your knowledge. Contribute to Allah before death befalls you. And then one would say, Oh my Lord, why don't you postpone my lifetime, my lifespan, even for a little? إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ قَرِيبٍ Why? فَأَصَّدَّقَ وَأَكُمْ مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ If you postpone my time, I'll now contribute to your deen. I will give for your sake. I will... I will Present and send forth for the hereafter. I'll invest for the hereafter. And I'll be amongst the pious. I'll remain in the company of the pious. Interestingly, he asks Allah to leave him and give him respite. And two good deeds are highlighted here. And this is to teach us that every day, let's prioritize these two good deeds to contribute to Allah and invest for the hereafter in every way possible. And the other is be in the company of the pious. Allahu Akbar. Something else we learn. The name of this chapter is Al-Munafiqoon. And spending for Allah is Al-Infaq. Contributing for Allah's sake towards Allah's deen in every way. We learn from here that spending for Allah and giving off oneself for Allah, one's, one's wealth, one's time, one's honor, one's knowledge for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sake, through this Allah will cure one from the great disease of hypocrisy. Allah save us. And the other is being in the company of the true pious people. Allah will cleanse us of, of hypocrisy. Look at the response of Allah to this question of this person, Allah will never postpone one's lifespan. When his time elapses, when his time comes, he has to go. Allah is well aware, Allah is well acquainted of your every action. This chapter also teaches us that our time is already written down. We have to go at that exact time. There is an interesting hadith where the blessed wife of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Hazrat Ummu Habiba radiallahu anha, asked Allah for a long life and for Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and for her father Hazrat Abu Sufyan radiallahu anhu, the beloved of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that you're asking Allah concerning lifespans that are decreed already. So we learn one of the meanings of the hadith where one will join family ties and one will fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that when Allah extends one's lifespan also means that Allah will bless a person even in the lifespan Allah gave him to do much more than someone else can do.